guys. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out the NECA Toys Heroes of the Storm. This is the Banshee Queen, Sylvanas. To find out how tall Sylvanas is, let's go ahead and grab the tape measure. She's close, if you count the tips of her ears, to about a seven inch tall figure. By the way, no, she does not come with the circular display stand currently featured attached to her feet. I used that just because I couldn't get the figure to really stand all that well. I suppose I didn't really try as hard as I could have, but I just got her on a display stand for the time being. Let's get her to stand. She actually does stand perfectly fine. I'm just being silly. She does come with some accessories. Uh, she comes with three arrows. You can pair those arrows with said bow. Bow's quite nice. I'll talk about the bow in a second. The arrows are, as you could expect it, a little bit on the thin side. They are a little thin and uh, brittle on the plastic. Now, she does have the means to hold one of the arrows. You can see how the fingers, the four fingers, are divided by two. That gives us two fingers on either side. And you can fit the feather or the end portion of the arrow in between those four fingers. Unfortunately, the fingers are lined up just in a way that they're not the easiest to get her to properly hold. But you can see that she holds the arrow in hand. Now you're asking yourself, how, how are you going to handle the other two arrows if, say, she is holding one of them? Well, she has a quiver on the back, and unfortunately, the quiver is not the greatest to hold the arrows. It's a very thin slot on the interior, and the arrows don't really line up all that well with it. That's about as far down as I can get the arrows, and then if you get more than one in there, it doesn't seem like doesn't seem like the arrows, or a lot of times it seems like the arrows are fighting with one another to kind of, you know, who who gets room inside the quiver. They're also very difficult to get back out of the quiver. And I think a lot of the problem lies in the fact that the arrow's tip, the little points here, somehow get lodged in there. If you even have the arrow slightly turned, it makes it next to impossible to pull these back out. I wish the quiver was just maybe a little bit wider so you can actually have fit those properly in and you wouldn't have had the risk of breaking any of the tips, which knock on wood, so far I haven't had the problems of doing that. Or I haven't had that problem yet. So let's go back and talk about the the bow here, which almost has a really nice shield motif on the front. A beautiful combination of silvers and metallic purples make up this, this beautiful looking bow. The bow has a real cord, real thread, I should say, to it. And it looks like the armor has been applied over top of an existing wooden, an actual wooden uh, a bow. You can get it into her hand by simply just I always pry the fingers a little bit to help aid me getting that over. And you can either have it facing this way or you can of course have it facing the other way. And it just fits into her hand. Now the problem is, at least that I've found, when you try to get it into her hand, getting around her thumb is not so much the problem, but then it ultimately ends up bending the four fingers inward. And that's not what you want. That's not going to help you hold the bow at all. And you can see that she's got the bow very comfortably put in her in her hand there. Let's talk about her other accessory. We'll move the bow off for the time being. She also comes with a staff which doesn't have quite the same purple coloring as the uh, as the arrow or as the bow. Looks like it's a slight different shade of violet or lavender. I don't know what I don't know. I don't know purples enough to give you a proper paint color on that. But it's two purples, one being a lighter violet and one being almost more like a, a, li a lilac, a lilac purple. We'll go with that. Both are slightly metallic, so that when you twist it, you can see that it has this really neat sheen to it. And really exquisite looking sculpt also as well. Yes, I did say exquisite. You can fit that also into her hand, just like so. The problem is trying to find the right area of the staff to fit her fingers around. I find the best place is this one section right here, which almost mirrors 
well actually this whole bottom section here mirrors an arrow so it's like the the feather portion of the of the arrow seems to be the best place where you can hold the the, uh, the staff here okay so let's have a look at the figure itself uh, much much like the uh, Commander Raynor that we had to look at. I honestly have not played, I believe this is StarCraft, I have not played StarCraft, so I don't really know too much about the character, but what I do know is plastic figures, and I have to admit that this one's quite nice. She has quite a pretty head sculpt with this pastel, I can't even describe, there I go back to problems with paint colors, I can't even describe properly the blue that they use. We'll just go with pastel blue. She is wearing a hood and peeking out from the hood, I, beyond the point of peeking, she has these very long ears sticking out. This one ear is not as bad as this one here. You can see where it's been slotted into place. It looks like very haphazardly applied glue and it doesn't look like the ear is completely sunken in. These are a little bit on, on more uh, brittle end of it so you want to make sure you don't snag that. Hair sculpt, though, is good. Face sculpt, very pretty. Bringing some of that purples we've talked about before. Not quite now a different shade of purple. This is, oh boy, or colors. Or I don't know what. A, li, would we go with a lilac, a blue-based purple? We'll go with blue-based purple. On the uh, areas around the red eyes, as well as the lips. So very pretty, pretty looking face. If her eyebrow is sticking that far out on the one side, you can imagine how squished it is on the other side as it's been tucked underneath her hair. The armor is comprised of uh, almost like a grayish brown, almost grayish black, I guess. And uh, she's got some of those uh, metallic purples in there as well. Some, again, some nice sculpting on the overall armor here. A nice touch too, she also has a fabric cape, which you can see has some rips and tears and stuff in it, but I love the fact that it's fabric and not simply just plastic. Move it out of the way, there is her behind, and again some of the nice coloring of the metallic purples resonating here. One of my favorite aspects of this particular figure is the shoulder pads. Not only do we get that metallic purple, but we also get some introduction to skulls. Skulls 101 or 106. There's six of them on either side and got some feathers sticking out from the bottom of her shoulder pads. Looking really nice, very, really, really nice looking figure. By a comparison, by the way, if you are wondering how tall she is as well, I know we already touched base on the size here, but let's bring in one of the other figures that we had to look at. I'll reach way off into the bowels of HE double hockey stick. We'll bring in there he is right there. Renegade Commander Raynor. As best as I can to try to hold him up. Oh, I just dropped the packaging. Trying to hold him up, uh, especially with the uh, the rifle in his hand. A little bit more trickier, but I seem to be getting a little bit better with him holding the rifle. I've got it way angled up. And uh, again, going back to what I talked about before, Raynor, Raynor seems like he's... He could be a little bit taller by comparing him to uh, Sylvanas here. Sylvanas, of course, a much thinner looking figure versus the more stockier build of Raynor here. Let's move him out of the way. Let's look at her posability. Her head rotates not quite all the way. I guess you could all the way around. That would kill her. You wouldn't want to do that. All the way around on the head, hinge up and down on the head. Arms rotate also all the way around, but it does come to some problem where it starts snagging itself on the cape. You want to try to avoid doing that. Arms also hinge out. You've got a swivel happening there. A hinge on the elbow, but it's the smallest of hinges happening here. So at the very least, if even if you bend the elbow, that's about all you're really going to get out of it. You also can rotate the hand all the way around and a hinge back and forth there. Upper torso ball joint. Legs can split out. A forward and back as well. Looks like a swivel, really not actually a cut in the thigh, but rather it looks like it swivels on the bicep it's sitting into. She has a bend at the knee, very, very moderate bend, not really a whole hot, a whole lot happening there. Rotation on the lower leg, 
ball joint or hinge joint. Looks like a universal joint maybe in the uh, foot there. So even though she's got the thinnest of ankles, you can rotate the feet all the way around, up and down. And you can also angle the feet left and right. And in case you are wondering, she does have peg holes not only on one foot, but she also has a peg hole on the other feet, or on the other foot. Of the two figures that we looked at from Heroes of the Storm, my favorite is the Banshee Queen, Sylvanas. She's got some really nice coloring. I love the beautiful sculpt on not only her face, but I think she has a really nice sculpted body as well. The only thing I would really say is a small little <coughs> to the figure is the fact that she just simply can't hold the arrows properly into her quiver. The quiver should have probably been just a little bit larger to fit not only the one, but the other two arrows, giving us a total of three. Getting one is not so much the problem. Getting more than one, well, you're going to be struggling a bit to get those arrows back out of place. If you can overlook that little part, and not really a lot of people are going to have deal breakers based on solely whether arrows can fit in the quiver, this is a beautiful, again, looking figure. Really nice to have on the uh, display shelf. Even if I don't really follow the source material in which the figure is based from, I can certainly appreciate the care and effort that NECA put into this line. And at the time that you're watching this video, again, I think the Heroes of the Storm has now just been kaput. I don't think NECA's planning on releasing any more of these, which is really a shame because I have always thought that they really do some beautiful looking figures from the Heroes of the Storm. Today we were having a look at the NECA Toys Heroes of the Storm. I know I said Heroes of the Storm like three times now. This was the Banshee Queen, Sylvanas. Sylvanas. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so. Of course, more videos will be coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.